Hello, flight simmers. The other day, I was idly scrolling through the marketplace, doing some window shopping, when I spotted this. BK Mi 8 from Romantic Wings. Now, I also like to fly on DCS, and the Mi 8 is one of my favourite modules. It's big, it's versatile, and it's great for practising cargo lifting and carrying external loads. And best of all, it is loaded with switches, and who doesn't like playing with switches? And on the DCS version, I'd say about 95% of them work and do what they're supposed to do. So, when I saw this become available for MSFS, I had to give it a try. Before we get started though, I want to point out that the DCS Mi 8 is currently £40.99, whereas this version cost me £20.99 on the marketplace. So, at approximately half the price, I think we need to manage our expectations a little. Inside the cockpit, the textures on the consoles look pretty good, although I feel the textures on these window pillars could be improved. But otherwise it looks pretty good in here. Although I'm not sure why the co-pilot has his hands sticking in the air like that. Maybe he wants to visit the little pilot's room? Who knows? But it is a little odd, so I'm going to get rid of him. Above our heads are all those lovely switches, although only about half of them are actually interactive. However, most of those that don't work are to do with the weapon systems, and as I got this from the marketplace, there are no weapons. The triangular panels in the corners normally turn on various flight related systems, however these don't work either. The systems they turn on just work anyway, with the exception of the voice warning system, aka nagging Natasha. Although that's no great loss. Behind us is the door to the cargo area. If we close this, the engineer appears rather abruptly in his seat. Not going to lie, it did give me a bit of a fright the first time. If we go through the door, we find the crew manning the external doors. Both can be opened and closed with their own click spots. And if we look behind the cockpit door, we find this control panel, which turns all the extras on and off. I'm not going to go through all of them, but my particular favourites are some of the cargo options, including a bear, and a VW Beetle. You can also swap the back doors for ramps. Now you may think it's a little inconvenient to have to move into the back to operate this panel. However, it is also available in the cockpit by pressing this button. And if we slide across to the co-pilot seat, there's another button that makes the GPS appear. Sadly, the Doppler navigation system doesn't work. If you've flown the DCS version, the startup procedure is much the same, only a little simplified. First thing I'm going to do is close the doors. You'll find the battery above the co-pilot seat. These banks of switches on the overhead panel are the breakers. As this is a marketplace version, we only need to concern ourselves with the ones in the middle and on the right. The ones on the left are for weapon systems, which we don't have anyway. Although I have been able to start this helicopter without turning on the breakers, so I don't think they actually do anything. But it's part of the startup procedure, and as previously mentioned, I do like flicking switches. Next we need to turn on the APU, open the fuel valves and turn on the fuel pumps. Above your head, you'll find the fuel mixture levers. We want both open to full. Then we can start engine 1. It takes a while to get going, but once the engine start light is out, we can start engine 2.
With both engines started, we can turn on the rectifier switches and any lights and such we need. As well as turn off the APU. You may also want to set your radar altimeter before takeoff. I normally set it for around 5 to 10 feet so I know when I'm about to touch down when landing, but it's not going off all the time when I'm flying low. Now we come to the real Achilles heel of this particular module. The Mi-8 uses a Sobos helicopter flight model, which does not currently support a helicopter autopilot. This helicopter is designed to be flown with the autopilot turned on. The developers have said in the documentation that this function is not currently working because the Sobos don't currently support it. They've clearly included click spots on the buttons, but they don't do anything yet. Presumably they are hoping that at some point in the future a Sobo will add autopilot support and then they'll have the buttons ready to go. If and when that will be, is anyone's guess. You could trim your pitch and your yaw, but the bank seems to be stuck in this position. Even the screenshots in the documentation show it in this position. The Mi-8 has wheels, so we should be able to ground taxi. However, even with the parking brake disengaged, it's very reluctant to get moving. I have to give it so much collective that I'm practically lifting off the deck. Once you get moving though, you can taxi if somewhat clumsily. With two pretty powerful engines, it doesn't take much to get into the air, and I like the dust effect at low altitude. However, without the autopilot, it's certainly a bit of a handful to get going. Also, without VR zoom, the GPS is quite hard to read. Flying the Mi-8 without the autopilot is a similar experience to attempting to guide a very large, very drunk friend home safely without them falling into a ditch. But that's not to say it's completely unflyable. Once you've got a feel for it, it will do what it's told. It just takes a lot of concentration and forward planning. But you can't relax with it, even for a second. You may find yourself having to hold one of the pedals in place for a long time to keep it in a straight line, which can be tiring if you have sprung pedals, or constantly holding the side click to one side or the other. But if you like helicopters that are challenging to fly, then you may quite like this and look how awesome it looks against that horizon. Now this aircraft does have a hoist that can be used for a variety of things. However I found trying to operate these and fly the aircraft without the autopilot rather tricky. So here I'm operating them during the playback. First off is the fire bucket. This actually hangs from the cargo hook on the belly but I've included it here anyway. If you want to role play the full firefighting scenario you can descend to the point where the bucket goes underwater then fly off to fight your fire. However, that's not necessary, and this bucket comes with an infinite supply of water. It's released using this button on the cyclic, which I've not been able to find a key binding for, and it's part of what's make operating while flying so difficult, as clicking with the mouse while it moves as you're flying is something of a coordination challenge. You can also sling external cargo from the hoist, although it doesn't seem to swing and affect the flights of the helicopter in the same way that it does in DCS seems quite rigidly attached to the helicopter actually, but this can be dropped using the same button as for the fire bucket. Finally, there's the emergency stretcher, which must be a truly terrifying way to travel. Okay, let's see what kind of abuse this thing will take. While not especially graceful, it will do a loop. Although this is essentially a flying bus, so I wouldn't expect to see it in any Red Bull air displays anytime soon. Roll on the other hand goes a little awry. I have done a successful roll in this before, but this one didn't work out. 
still, it didn't crash, so it has that going for it. So, overall opinion. I really don't dislike this helicopter. It's great to see big helicopters like this making an appearance in MSFS, and the Mi-8 is one of my favourites. The only major thing holding this back is the autopilot. There are MSFS helicopters out there that do implement an autopilot really well, specifically the high performance group helicopters. However, they achieve this by creating their own flight model. I would have to have paid more for this module had they gone a similar route and had the autopilot functioning. As it is, we'll have to wait and see if Sobe will grace us with a helicopter flight model that supports autopilot. But I wouldn't hold your breath if I were you. Is it worth getting as it is? I wouldn't recommend it for less experienced pilots, but if you're a fan of the Mi-8 and you feel up to the challenge of wrestling it into submission, it can be fun to fly. And there's something about the view from the cockpit that I love. It feels kind of like being in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. You can nothing. You're braver than I thought. Nice, come on. The DCS Mi-8 is without doubt the superior of the two. It's full fidelity and an all-round more complete flying experience. But it's twice the price, you have limited maps to explore, scenery isn't as good. If you just want to cruise through some nice scenery in a Mi-8, then this still has a lot going for it. Well, that about does it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you try this model yourself, please share your thoughts in the comments. And if you made it to the end of this video, then you may want to consider hitting the subscribe button. Until next time, bye safe.